the privilege you have given us to come once more before your throne of grace. We thank you for bringing us together. Your word says it is good and pleasant for us to dwell together. And so, Lord, oh God, as we go into a time of praise and worship as a prelude to the word that you have for today, let your blessed presence by the power of the Holy Spirit locate, see me, locate every one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. In this atmosphere, Lord, as your children join in, Lord, oh God, open their hearts and minds so that what you have planned for today will be indelibly inscribed in every head. So take all the glory, take all the... As you worship your Father, Lord, oh God, take your place in the name of Jesus. Be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, over to you, Simi. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening, church. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to see things like you do. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my God. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock, forever and all my days. I will love you, Lord, forever and all my days. I will love you, Lord, and I will love you, Lord, my rock. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my love, forever and all my days. I will love you, Lord, forever and all my days. I will love you, Lord. And God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom to do things like you do and hallelujah god reigns hallelujah god reigns hallelujah god reigns forever and all my days I will love you, Lord, forever and all my days. I will love you, Lord, forever and all my days. I will love you, Lord, forever and all my days. I will love you, Lord. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord. Forever 
his truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him, He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord. Forever his truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is exalted forever exalted on high in your God. He is exalted forever exalted on high. Yes, he is. He is exalted forever exalted on high. In Jesus' name we have worshiped. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Simi, for that exhortation. We give glory to God. Father, we thank you once more. We bless your name. We give you praise. Your word has said that anytime we worship you, your blessed presence is enthroned in our midst. And so, Father, we, we commend ourselves to you. I commend myself to you. I commend every one of your children that has logged in to hear you. Not a man. I am purely... Um, a messenger boy and so Lord speak to me and speak through me to inscribe indelibly on the hearts of your children the particular message whatever the nugget it is that is applicable to everyone that has logged in Lord or oh God open their hearts and minds to receive the instruction and counsel for this particular time Holy Spirit take preeminence I yield myself into the hollow of your hands use me anoint my tongue like the pen of a ready writer and let the hearts and minds of everyone be open to you with the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and say amen in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you are this evening. God bless you for tuning in. Now, make it short and sharp. Um, we are going to be looking at Daniel chapter 5 and 6 today. And I will take the liberty to assume that you have gone through it if you have not when we finish this evening you'll be surprised that it takes probably less than 10 minutes to go through it if you're studying it it would take a lot longer so i'll quickly go on daniel 5 i'll read the first the first four verses and we kick off from there belshazzar the king made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of a thousand I'm reading from the New King James. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels, which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem, that the kings and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. Verse 4. They drank wine and praised the gods, praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Father, Lord, bless your word once more. It's not by might or by power, but by your Holy Spirit. So, Spirit of God, reign our rule supreme as we minister here in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The first thing I'm going to point out to us 
looks obvious, I have titled it Belshazzar's Blasphemous Act. Now, please, if you're not in the beginning of what we read here, Belshazzar de demanded that all the sacred, you see those items of gold and, and silver, they are sacred, they are holy to God. And the, the Bible makes us realize that his father had plundered them from the Jewish temple and brought to that royal banquet. And so they filled those holy vessels with intoxicating wine, things that God had commanded to be kept for the use of the temple for his glory. And so what he was doing was, in a way, trying to recall the glory days um, of the Babylonian Empire because it was his time. But what we do notice is, even though Nebuchadnezzar, his, well, not his father directly, but his grandfather, he did not use any of those items for the sacrilege that was being committed in this place. Now, um, please note that um, there is nothing wrong with going to parties. Jesus went to a number of them. In fact, the very first miracle that Jesus did what us, uh, at a party was at in John 2, where he, he turned water into wine. Uh, we also remember that Jesus went to a get-together in Peter's house where he healed uh, Peter's mom. We also remember um, the, the, the party he had with, with, um, with Zacchaeus and Matthew, tax collectors, and he used those parties, those occasions, for the advancement of the gospel to save lives. But in this situation, Belshazzar, Belshazzar was making a mockery and ridicule of God. Now, let me read something else to you that God says um, to us. This is Paul to the church in Corinth. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, if you can turn to it in your, on your gadget, from verse 14. I'll go through it quickly. He says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with, Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? They were please note they were praising the gods of silver, of gold, of stone, and of wood. Then he goes on to say, for you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, verse 17, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Now, please note, Daniel, if he was invited to this party, did not show up because it is not named that Daniel was one of those thousand lords who were at this party of profanity. So where was Daniel? We are not told, but he was not there. As we read here, we realize he, I chose to believe by inference that he chose not to be unequally yoked together with this sacrilegious act. The Bible reminds us in, in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Says, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. And verse 34 of it says, I work to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I say, I, say, I speak this to your shame. Now, in the Passion Translation of the same scripture, it says, so stop fooling yourselves. Evil companions will corrupt good morals and character. Come back to your right senses and awaken to what is right. Repent from your sinful ways, for some have no knowledge of God's wonderful love. You should be ashamed that you make me right this way to you. Now, what am I pointing out there? It is not every party that we are called to. Sorry, pardon me, let me use this word. Every O and B that happens, Mr. Johnson is going to be opening up now and party galore is going to be happening from this summer. People who have been locked down from over a year. All those parties where they do all sorts of things that are such from concern, sacrilegious, it's a time for us to awaken to Russia and be very careful. God locked us down for a particular reason, so that we can introspect and look at who and what we do. 
Now move on quickly to the second, to my second point. Daniel chapter five, still on Daniel, Daniel chapter five, I'll read quickly verses five through to nine. And it says, in the same hour, when they were carrying out the sacrilegious act, in the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans and the soothsayers. The king spoke saying to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a gold chain around his neck and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation, verse nine. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed and his lords were astonished. Now let me, let me, the title of this second point, it's that when there is a sacrilegious act without repentance, judgment, is always on the way. And sadly, it starts from we, church folk. Now, let me point us to verse 7 of Daniel 5. It says, the king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, all those people who, as it were, operate by the spirit of divination, which you all have around us. The Bible says they could not even read the language for whatever that inscription was that was written with that hand that was floating. Now, all around us in this community, around London, anywhere you have communities of people, you see what astrologers and the Chaldeans and the soothsayers represent, those who operate by that spirit of divination. They're called, if you check your local, in the local paper, they're called those marabouts of international thing. We've shared this before. They're called psychics. They're called palm readers. We still have some called soothsayers. There are plenty of them operative in and around churches and around wherever we live. Now, please note, the Lord ensured that they did not have an answer that day. You say, ask for... I think verse 12 reminds us that there is no other name. Salvation is not in any other name other than the name and the person of Jesus. They could not answer. And so what am I saying here? We should be careful. We should operate by the spirit of discernment. Amen. The verse 25 of it says that inscription was written many, many take with person, but we'll come to that as we go through this um, discourse. Now, the third item. Verses 11 through to 12, let me read that out. Now, while this commotion was going on, the queen mother reminds Belshazzar that, look, your astrologers and this marabouts and this soothsayers cannot attend to this problem. She now goes on to say, verse 11, there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God and in the days of your father, Light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, is reminding him, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. Verse 12, in as much as an excellent spirit, knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the appropriate interpretation. The so question is, let's allow that spirit of God that would distinguish and set us apart to become resident in us. You see, every other thing, John 14, 6, um, I think Thomas was having a discussion with, with Jesus. It says, uh, Jesus said that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one experiences the blessings of heaven except through me. Now, so I pray that may the Lord deposit that same kind of spirit that comes from Christ, deposit it in every one of us so that we have eyes anointed to see, ears anointed to hear, and know with divine clarity 
what we ought to do at every point in time. Now, fourth item. Now, Daniel 5, 16. Let's go all the way to verse 16. Read it out. I'm still on the New King James Version. Now, this is about... Daniel now has been brought to the palace where this profane party was taking place. Verse 16. And I have heard of you that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. You see, we were talking about Marabas and soothsayers. You pay them. People pay them. In fact, some of them will advertise, pay after results. Go and check the local paper. Go and check the London papers. Hallelujah. Now, so what I'm pointing out here is we are defined by Christ, not by anything on offer. Now, please note, for the astrologers and the soothsayers, for them, this means a lot. To be clothed with purple, to have a gold chain, and become the third ruler in the kingdom, it connotes a life of affluence, a life of materialism, a life of well-being, a life of promotion, a life of elevation. Now, so Daniel says in verse 17, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. So literally, Belshazzar was saying, I'll pay you handsomely if you solve this riddle. So you cannot place conditions on the dictates of the spirit. God gives his spirit liberally. It is not an account of clothing called purple. It's not an account of clout. It's not an account of cash or castle or whatever, or charisma, whatever it is. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Luke 12, this is Jesus speaking to us. Let me say us. And he said to them, Luke 12, 15, because Daniel would not be moved by these material things. And he said to them, guard yourself, this is Jesus, and keep free from all covetousness. I'm reading from the, I've, take, I've taken this text from the amplified version, the classic one. It says, and he said to them, guard yourselves and keep free from all covetousness, the immoderate desire for wealth, the greedy longing to have more, for a man's life, let's listen to this, a man's life does not consist in and is not derived from possessing overflowing abundance of that which is over and above his needs. Oh, hallelujah. In Matthew 4, when Jesus was led into the desert to be tempted by the devil, the final straw, let's go there, Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4 from Verse 8, Matthew 4 from verse 8. Now it says, again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all those things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, which is what we shall also do, away with you, literally say, get lost. Away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. If you can go on your gadget, 1 John 2, 16 and 17, in the Passion Translation, it says, for all that the world can offer us, you see, Belshazzar had a lot to offer that looked attractive. For all that the world can offer us, the gratification of our flesh, the allurement of the things of the world, and the obsession with status and importance. None of these things come from the Father, but from the world. This world and its desires are in the process of passing away, but those who love to do the will of God will live forever, like Daniel. 
So Daniel did not give in to this temptation to be lured by these material things. Now let's look at what Paul had to say to Timothy on this subject of materialism when it comes to the gospel. First Timothy 6, 6 through to 10, I'll read all of that to us. I'm reading that from the New King James Version. It says, now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with this we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Verse 10. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and press themselves through with many sorrows. Christ defines us by him. Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. Adam 5. Now if I take us back to Daniel chapter 5, the first verses, I'm not going to read it again, but you can write that down if you're taking notes. Item number 5 is that we must be watchful and alert. We must, why do I say this? I say, Belshazzar and all his henchmen were patting away into the night while an invasion was in progress. So question is, how did such a supposedly formidable kingdom, the most powerful kingdom in the world at that time, with the greatest armed forces, with the greatest resources, with the greatest minds, that is what, with the greatest voodoo priest, who can, as it was, see anything before the show, did not see or recognize an invading army. They had trampled Jehovah. They had become overconfident. They had become reckless. In fact, they were drunk. The Bible says a thousand people were parting away into the night, and numerous, numerous mini parties were all going on at the same time in Babylon at that time. Hallelujah. See what Jesus says. Matthew 13:25. 24 to 25. He says, another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Now verse 25. While men slept, while men were not paying attention, while men got carried away, whilst men got distracted, whilst men shifted their focus away from Christ, his enemy came and sowed tears. Uh, you may say, oh, I'm too. First Corinthians 10, 12. Let him who thinks he stands. Now, this is applicable to every one of us. Whether pastor, prelate, preacher, prophet, prophetess, whatever the title, you and I. Let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. Reverend Peter puts it this way to us. In 1 Peter 5, 8, he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The Persian army, the Median army, had surrounded Babylon, and they were parting away. They did not notice that an invasion was taken. They had already crept in, into Babylon. Hallelujah. Psalm 90 puts it this way in the Passion Translation of how to use our time and mind. He says, help us, Psalm 90 verse 12. He says, help us to remember that our days are numbered and help us to interpret our lives correctly. Goes on to say, set your wisdom deeply in our heart so that we may accept your correction. The... The, the Anglicans, the, 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 the Methodists, the Baptists, they have this. You can go and Google it and search it. I won't sing it, but I'll tell you what the first verse says. I wrote it down here. It says, Christian, seek not yet repose. Hear your guardian angels say, you are in the midst of foes. Watch and pray. And may I add, Matthew 26, 41, 
This is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. He says, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hallelujah. Move on quickly. All the way down now to Daniel 5, 29 through to 30. That's item number six. Now, Belshazzar's period, simply, Belshazzar's sin of pride. Uh, last week, if you tuned in last week, Minister Antonia was hammering on this. I believe it has come up again, but I'll just touch on it before we before we, we move on. Belshazzar's pride, despite knowing the account in history of how God humbled his granddad Nebuchadnezzar on account of pride, he lost sight, forgot about that. And in the last days of Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible makes us realize that he acknowledged God. If you go back to the, 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 the latter verses of verse four, before he passed on, he acknowledged Jehovah. Um, and showed that right through the entirety of his kingdom, Jehovah was acknowledged. So verses 29 through to 30, it says, uh, Then Belshazzar gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third one. Now verse 30 is where I'm going on 31. That very night, that very night that that profane, profane party was taking place, the Bible says Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. So the demise of King Belshazzar illustrates the truth. What the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Oh, hallelujah. James 4, 6 puts it this way, that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, so the seventh item I'll round up on there. What is the antidote to Belshazzar's error? Quickly, just three things. Honor God in everything. Let me remind us of, of um, a song, those of us who are familiar with him. There's this song um, written by Hillsong in Australia. We sing it a lot. Very emotional when we sing it. That this is my desire. This is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship. I'm a teacher of the word. I'm not a singer. So you sing it on your own and let it minister to you when you sing. Then it ends it. Lord, have your way in me. I pray that the Lord will have his way in everything we do that he takes. First priority. Jesus put something this way on account of those who serve him and honor him. John 12, 26 says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father will honor. Second item. So we said first one, the antidote for Belshazzar's error, just three things. Second thing is humility. Peter puts it this way again, 1 Peter 5, 6. If you will humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, in his good time, he will lift you up. James 4, 10. Let me quickly find that and read that out. James chapter 4, verse 10. I'll read that out quickly. James 4, 10. Now it says, humble yourselves. Humility in the sight of God. The same thing Peter said. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Hallelujah. Third item, our focus must be fixed. Not on earthly things, but on Christ. That's a song. Sorry, it's probably an evening of songs. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Go and Google it. You'll find it. In Colossians 3, for seven verses, let me quickly read that out to you from the New King James. It says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not things on earth. 
For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God, verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory, verse 5. Therefore, push to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, like Belticia was practicing, which is idolatry, verse 6. Because of these things, the wrath of God, as it came on Belticia, is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourself once walked when you lived in it. But we are children of God. Our focus must be, focusing on the focus, focusing on Christ. Christ puts this very popular verse of scripture to us, Matthew 6, 23, seek you first the kingdom of God and all is righteous and all these things will be added to you. Another scripture, and I round up on this Daniel 5. Hebrews 12, one to the very popular I uh, would uh, pick it from the amplified version. It says, therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight and the sin, which so readily, deftly and cleverly clings to and entangles us and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Now verse two, looking away from all that will distract, Belshazzar and his thousand lords were distracted. He now goes on to say, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, given the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God and may I add, making an intercession for every one of us. Hallelujah. My God, my time is fast spent. I will quickly, so turn your Bibles, quickly move on now to Daniel, the sixth chapter. I'll read the first five and I will go on from there. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter six. Now he placed Darius to set over the kingdom, 120 citraps to be over the whole kingdom. I'm reading from the New King James. And over these three governors, oh, of whom Daniel was one, that the citraps might give account to them, so that the king will suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and citraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to set in him over the whole realm. Verse 4. So the governors and citraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not. They could find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then this man said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So first item, so as I flow through this, is the blessings of an excellent spirit. An excellent spirit comes from Jehovah. And now this ship traps the governors tried everything. Makes us realize that Daniel's faithfulness, his outstanding work ethic, his integrity, made it next to impossible for his adversaries to find grounds for a charge against him. So they realized that this man is so astute with his work that the only way we can nail him is on account of Jehovah. Now, so question is, applies to me, applies to you. How many of us today will pass that MOT of scrutiny? We can only pass it by an excellent spirit and comes only from Christ. Isaiah 11 I believe verse 2 says the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of boldness. All these things come from God. Hallelujah. So 
Is it in sudden to show ourselves approved to God? As Paul put it to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15, let's do it with excellence. Is it in preparing for an exam or an interview? Let's do it with excellence. In when pastor was ministering Daniel uh, chapter 1, 17 through to 20, the Bible makes us realize that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because of an excellent spirit, they were found 10 times superior to all those other astrologers and soothsayers and magicians who were born and bred in Babylon. Please don't forget that these boys were captives from another nation. They had to learn the laws and the customs. You know why? Because an excellent spirit was in them and that excellent spirit is available to us. I pray that we seek the face of God. The Bible says in Proverbs 2, 6, that for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. We need to covet that. We need to decree it over ourselves. We need to decree it over our children. We have been sent for this particular time to be for signs and wonders. If people set apart like Daniel who made waves in Babylon. Hallelujah. The Bible says in, in James 1, 5 through 2, 8, that if we are lacking in this excellence of wisdom, we shall ask, when we ask, God has promised that he will give liberally without reproach. 1 Corinthians 14, 40 says that let everything that we do, this is we church people, let everything we do be done decently and in order. The wise man puts it this way, Solomon in Ecclesiastes 9.10, that whatever your hand find that to do, let me paraphrase it, do it with excellence. Now, after God completed creation in Genesis 1, hear what God says. Genesis 1.31, uh, I extracted this from the, from the living Bible. All along, he's been saying everything was good. Sun, good. Moon, good. Sea, good. When he finished, after he created man, step back. Hear what God says. Then God looked over all that he had made, and it was excellent in every way. May that spirit of excellence rest upon us that whatever we lay our hands to do, the excellence of God will be in manifestation so that we are established for the signs and wonders that God has called us to be. Quickly, second item, Daniel 6, 6 through to 10. Let me quickly read that again. Daniel chapter 6, 6 through to 10. So this governors and satraps thronged before the king and said to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, the king, therefore, King Darius signed the signed the written decree. Oh, hallelujah. So, item number two on Daniel 6. Accusers of the brethren, of you and I, are always around. The Sambalas, the Tobias, the Arabs, the Gershams, when God institutes something through you. Please do not be negligent. We are children of lights. The agents of darkness need lights to see. So the light of God, according to these people, I call them the conspirators against Daniel. Now, the question I'm asking also is, what's the king not discerning to realize that this particular decree was on account of Daniel? And the forces of darkness can collude just because of you, just because of the anointing over your life, because every one of us here and here, that's a peculiar anointing that God has placed on us. And that anointing must come into manifestation, but we need to stand aground. See what Isaiah says in Isaiah 54, 15. It says, 
they shall surely assemble this is God saying, against you, but not because of me. And goes on to say, whoever assembles against you will fall for your sake. Oh, it's a good place to say amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, so did Jesus have, does Jesus have this conglomerate of conspirators? Plenty. Jesus says, the same way they persecute me, the same way I face challenges, you will face challenges, is not new. I always hear John 16, 33, that in this world, you and I will have tribulation, but Jesus says to us, we must be of good cheer because he has overcome. So the Pharisees and, 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 and the Sadducees, they wanted him dead. Numerous assassination attempts, but in the, the Bible says it was not his time. So you cannot be taken out. It's not possible. Because God says those enemies are condemned. Revelation 12 10. I'm going to run up on this quickly. Revelation 12 10. New King James Version. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of a God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. Oh, hallelujah. Luke 10 19 reminds me. It says, I have given the authority to trample over serpents and over scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by no means harm you. We need to take those things back to God when those challenges come. I remind God that, Lord, you cannot lie. This is what you have said. I'm your child. Move on my behalf. Oh, hallelujah. Let me quickly move to the third, third item. Now, so the decree had been signed. And Daniel knew. So item number three is a question. Whose reports are we going to hold on to when we are faced with the prospect of a lion's den? Hallelujah. Now, of course, as we know, Daniel did not compromise. The Bible said on that same day when he knew the decree was signed, we'll come to that, he went back to his prayer closet. Now, Daniel held on. I surmised that Daniel must have been at peace. The Bible did not say he was perturbed in any form, shape, or fashion. On the reminder that he serves the God who remains the same today, yesterday, and forever, it's the same God that rescued Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from a fiery furnace that was fired up seven times beyond its normal. So it was like, Lord, you did it before. You didn't fail Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There is no record of failure in you. I don't know what is going to happen, but I'm just going to be at peace. And guess what? He stood his ground. Dan Daniel was recorded. He survived the lions. I have a question also, Bible scholars have asked it. Why lions? Why not send Daniel to the fiery furnace? Well, it's recorded in the Babylonian annals that this kind of people, you and I, Babylonian fire does not have power over us. Isaiah puts it that way in Isaiah 43, that if you, when you go through the fire, it will not scorch you. Oh, hallelujah. So the Babylonians, this is me, just problem must have realized that these people survive fire. The lions will do it this time, but the lions failed. You know why? The Lord we serve is a consuming fire. In fact, Jeremiah 23, 29 says, but the Bible says, it's my word, not a fire. That means God is a consuming fire. So if we beckon God, the fire will be stilled. Hallelujah. So I wrote something down here. Daniel did not collapse under this pressure. In the Passion Translation, Proverbs 24.10, it says, if you faint when under pressure, you have no strength, or your strength is small. Daniel did not fear the satraps, uh, the, the astrologers, and, and those politicians. Hallelujah. The Bible reminds us in Hebrews 10.23, it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. In verse 35 of that same Hebrews 10, the Bible says, do not cast away your confidence. It has great reward, and that great reward got Daniel out of the lion's den. 
We are talking about being bold in the presence of Almighty God. Peter puts it this way when he was when he, he and his um, colleagues faced the Sanhedrin. Acts 5, 29. It says, but Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Daniel did not crumble. He did not obey the instruction not to pray. Hallelujah. By yielding to that pressure, Daniel would have been violating uh, uh, the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20 verse 3 says, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall bow to no one except me. And God honored him. Hallelujah. I have always, I have, I have, I have had a preacher man saying, obey God and leave all the consequences to him. And God cannot fail. He's not failed before. He, there's no record of failure in him. You cannot fail once, let's stand our ground on him. Amen. Now, quickly moving on the fourth item. Now, verse 10, verse 10 of Daniel 6. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open, that's so that he can see him, he didn't have to close, he didn't have to hide. With windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom in his early days. So which means... Prayer was a habit. So item four is your petitions in the prayer closet. Uh, it's an instruction to every one of us, whether young or old, whether old in ministry or coming in new into ministry or new into Christ. Prayer must be a habit. The Bible makes us realize in verse 10 here that the last part of verse 10, that prayer was his custom since his early days. Question is, it's another song, I won't sing it. When you left your room this morning, when you woke up this morning, did you think to pray? It's a song, I'm not gonna sing it. That did you pray in the name of Christ our savior? Did you request for his loving favor as your guide and shield for today, you see where I come from in Nigeria. Because of the issues going on in Nigeria, the people I know they do not step out of their houses uh, without fortifying them. You see, in fact, you see Psalm ninety-one. I know a number of them. I was there a few months ago. They will recite the entire sixteen verses without flinching. So before they step out, they fortify themselves. Angels have gone ahead of them. While they're out, they're fortifying themselves. When they come back later day before they go to bed, they are fortifying themselves. And you know what? The Lord hears. So let's cultivate or rekindle that habit of prayer where it's applicable. Paul put something this way. Daniel was in the lion's den here. He says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, which uh, Daniel did here. He said, let your request be made known to God. Paul also to the church of the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, pray without season. I've always said is, there's no vacation from prayer. Hallelujah. James 5.16 says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much, and it was referring to, to um, Elijah in this context in 1 Kings 18, 14, the latter, the last, but I won't go through it because of time. The Bible says, verse 43 of 1 Kings 18, and this is Elijah said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went and looked up and said, there is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there's a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of this. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Don't give up. Galatians 6, I believe verse 9, says, do not be worried whilst you're doing good because in due season, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up because you didn't see. Bible makes us realize Elijah was praying consistently, even though he didn't see. But all he needed was that little bit of cloud that brought forth the abundance of rain. 
This is me. I believe probably one of the prayers that Daniel may have prayed there was <laughs> Psalm 35. Plead my cause, O Lord. Strive with these satraps and these astrologers that, that have come against me. Strive with them. Jesus says in Luke 18 that men wanted to. Men always ought to pray and not faint. Hallelujah. Quick on item number five. I label this the peace that transcends all human understanding. Now, um, why do I say this? The Bible does not record that Daniel was perplexed in any form, shape, or fashion. Now, um, there are many depictions, you can go and Google this, there are many pictorial de de depictions of, of Daniel in the lion's den. And one of the ones that fascinated me was, I was listening to a preacher man, and it was th this particular one, where Daniel is in the lion's den. Bones of animals, humans, <laughs> Literally, but he was looking up to a window where a ray of light was shining. Are we still together now? So, which means his focus was on Jehovah, not on the lions who were just lying down there because the Lord had shut their mouths. The Bible says in Isaiah 26, 3 to 4, that you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Verse 4 says, trust in the Lord forever, for in here the Lord is everlasting strength. Now Paul continues, we're looking at Philippians 4. Let me read out again. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Then goes on to say, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Can I remind us of something? One of the covenant names of Jehovah is Shalom, the God of peace in a troubled situation. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me quickly move on. I have just a few minutes left. Item number six. Uh, Daniel 6, 18 through to 23. Let me quickly read through that. It says, now the king, this king Darius, went to his palace and spent the night fasting for Daniel. And no musicians were brought before him. Also, his sleep went for, from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, Servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continuously, been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel responded, verse 21, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the mouth of the lions so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. Also, O king, I have done no wrong. So this one is, the Lord vindicates Daniel and vanquishes his enemies. He will do the same for you. Now, so verse 24, this is where Daniel's enemies are vanquished. And we don't have to be psychedelic about this or intellectual about it. Verse 24, it says, and the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel. You see, the accuser of the brethren, revelous children, has been cast down, whether they're in human form or the devil sent them. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Let me remind us of something. This is Israel after Moses had taken them out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 28, 7. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face is a good place to say amen, amen, I say that. They shall come out. They are going to come out against you in one way, but they will flee in seven weeks before you and fall by the sword. The Lord did it for Daniel. He will do the same for you. Now, see, we, we, we were touching on Isaiah 54. It says that indeed, Isaiah 54, 15 through to 17, indeed they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. Whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the spoiler to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue. Every tongue of a citrap of an astrologer that rises against the in judgment, you shall condemn. You shall condemn. 
Because it is your inheritance, as the Bible says here, because you are the servant of the Lord and your righteousness is from the Lord. I need to rush out quickly. My goodness, I am over time. Last item. Number seven. Let me. Now, I've just titled that this entire episode culminates in elevating the name of Jehovah. Daniel 6, 25 through 28. We're going to round up on this in a few minutes. Then King Darius wrote to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell, please note this, in all the earth, just like Nebuchadnezzar sent a message right across every embassy in every nation. King Darius wrote to all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is... Present tense there. For he is, you know, the Lord describes himself in Jesus that I am. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans 14, 11, when we're studying it, it's just a reminder. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Zechariah 14, 9, I wrote that and it says, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. This has been prophesied. In that day, it shall be the Lord is one, and his name one, right across the nations of the earth. <clears throat> In that verse 20, let me remind us again. So he says, for he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. Good place to say, man. So let me conclude on this. This applies to every one of us. Matthew 28, the last two verses. And Jesus spoke to them, that is you and I, saying... All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you till the very end of the age. Amen. Daniel stands in Babylon, got the gospel to be delivered to every nook and corner of the earth. Let's do our bit. The Lord has commissioned every one of us. It's not the function of pastors. It's not the function particularly of preachers or apostles or prophets. It is a function of you and I as born again children of God to let Christ be seen in us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you. I'm a number of minutes behind. Father, we thank you for this time that we have been able to spend in your presence. Lord, oh God, whatever nugget is there, Lord, oh God, that is appropriate for anyone. Listen, Lord, oh God, let it grow and germinate as seed grows and brings forth a harvest. Let whatever that seed, Lord, oh, grow and germinate in the heart and mind of everyone. So we say thank you, Father. Lord. We give you glory. We give you all the honor. And all that adoration goes to you, Father, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Um, I was thinking I'll finish by time, but hey, um, I believe that's how God's one. The let's honor God in our thanks and offerings. Um, the uh, mobile pay function number has been flashed up on the screen. For the rest of us, those who use the website, please do. You can use it. And those of you who already have the bank details, please do use it. And may the Lord honor what you sow and put in his hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all.